Shalom. Giving all praises to the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rachachachwarash. Double honors to the apostles, the bishops, and the elders at Great Millstone who rule well. Peace and salutations as always to the elect. And I was checking out this video by the elder apostle Tahar. All right, GMS declaring the end. Um, subscribe, be edified. Title of the video any camp teaching that hell is a place all right well so where souls burn forever where you have a uh demon engulfed in fire named satan <laughs> all right you know the god of the underworld uh you got eight demons on you now a question came up in this video um can israelites all right be blotted out of the book of life all right and i wanted to deal with that question because the answer is yes all right, and when you deal with the book of life, all right, in short, pretty much the book of life is dealing with all of the Israelites that were chosen from the foundation of the earth, all right, who were ordained, all right, to be beamed up at Yahweh Shah's return, all right, and enter into the new covenant, which takes place on a secret chamber. All covenants take place in a secret chamber. That's why the scriptures say, you know, the, the bride have made herself ready. The bride representing the church, all right, will be entered into that second covenant, all right, up on Yahweh Shai's return, all right. Right now, all right, we have received the Holy Spirit of promise, all right, through the blood of Yahweh Shai, you know, which covers the sins of the elect, all right, and ultimately gives us the understanding um, of, you know, where we're going, you know, who we are. You know the ability to stand on our feet prophesy but at its coming that blood all right will be used all right as a matter of fact let's get that in the book of uh revelation the fifth chapter revelation the fifth chapter in the ninth verse and they sung a new song saying thou art worthy to take the book and open the seals thereof okay the understanding of this truth was opened to us through Yahweh Shai's blood, for thou was slain, okay, and has redeemed us to the Most High God, Yahweh, out, all right, by thy blood, out of every kindred, all right, tongue, and people and nation, all right, and that's when Yahweh Shai returns, all right, the scripture says in the book of um, Matthew, the 24th chapter, in the 31st verse, all right, and he shall send his angels with the great sound of a trumpet. And they shall gather together his elect, all right, elect from the four winds from one end of heaven to the other. And when you look up this word elect, let's look it up in the Greek. Okay, electos, okay, picked out, okay, when were they picked out? From the beginning, from the foundation of the earth, as we'll show you, all right, chosen by the Most High to obtain salvation through Yahweh Shai, all right, the elect, chosen elect, all right, the followers of Yahweh Shai, which it says Christians, which we know that the uh, true Christians were the Israelites who follow the Mashiach, the Messiah, Hamashiach, the Messiah, okay, they were followers of the Messiah, they were called Christians in the book of Acts, the 11th chapter, in Antioch, you know, as a derogatory term. All right, but ultimately, Christos of Christ, Christian means anointed ones. All right, and the ones who have been anointed with the truth, all right, are the true followers of Yahweh Shai. Okay, it says, um, the Messiah is called elect as appointed by the Most High. All right, as the scripture says, he's elect and precious. Uh, the third example says, choice, select, the best of its kind or class, all right? Excellence preeminent applied to certain individual followers of Yahweh Shah or Christians. Now, we know pursuant to Revelation, the seventh chapter, that will be fulfilled in Yahweh Shai, establishing the 144,000 in a large multitude, which will be gathered out of all nation, kindreds, and tongues, and people, okay? And when you deal with the book of life, okay, um, only the elect are written in the book of life. 
Okay, and we're going to deal with a few scriptures that have the book of life in them. Um, let's go here to Revelation 3 and 5. To he that overcometh, the same shall be clothed with white raiment. What is that white raiment? Those new bodies. As we're entered into those chariots, we're going to what? Receive the new bodies, which will what? The law, statutes, and commandments will be put in our inward part. As a matter of fact, the new bodies in Revelation, the 19th chapter, right? Revelation, the 19th chapter, and the uh, this is when Yahweh shall returns. It, it enters us into the marriage of the Lamb. Okay? And only the elect will take part in this feast, all right, in this union. All right, the two thirds of our people, all right, they 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 have no part in that first resurrection. They have no part, all right, in this uh, reunion here. Okay, only the elect to make it in onto those ships. The second death has no power over them, as we'll show you. It says, "Let us be glad and rejoice, and give honor to him, for the marriage of the Lamb has come." Now, any of you guys saying we're in the new covenant, have we been married back to the Lamb yet? No, we've we've been espoused to one husband. We're in the espousal period. We're promised to the Most High through Yahweh Shai. All right, but we have to make ourselves ready. Okay, and the marriage is consummated in the secret chamber, which is a lesson I plan on doing. You know, all covenants are made in the secret chamber. Okay, you couldn't just, you know, the jump in the king's bed and say, all right, well, no, as a, as a woman, you had to prepare yourself. There were particular rituals and, you know, uh, mindset. You had to get yourself ready. You know, now we know and understand that certain marriages, you know, happen, you know, as soon as, you know, you had what you would call your, uh, not one night stand, but, you know, certain men would get it, you know, on the first night. All right. But this is an arranged marriage here. Okay. And it, it's going to be done in order. So the marriage of the lamb says, let us be glad and rejoice. And we'll go more into that in another lesson and give honor to him. For the marriage of the Lamb has come, and the wife, which is the church, all right, have made herself ready. And to her it was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen, clean and white. For the fine linen is the righteousness of the saints, which is ultimately, all right, the law, statutes, commandments being written, all right, in our inward part. Okay? And he said unto me, Blessed. All right, right. Blessed are they which are called unto the marriage supper of the Lamb. And he said, all right, unto me, these are the true sayings of the Most High. Okay, this is why in uh, the 21st chapter of Revelation, once we come down, because we know, pursuant to what Paul writes in 1 Corinthians, the 15th chapter. All right, we're going to all be changed. Okay, 1 Corinthians 15. Just Rick, get it real quick. Okay. First Corinthians 15 and 51. All right, let's get it in the NLT. But let me reveal to you a wonderful secret. We will not all die. All right, two thirds will die. Death has dominion over them. Death doesn't have dominion over the elect. But we will all be transformed. All of the elect will be transformed, changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, all right, he's going to gather his elect from the four corners of the earth, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed, okay? For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. What is immortality? A body that doesn't die, okay? And a... Uh, and... Fuck that. Man, it's too late. Strong's G110. Athanasia. Athanasia. See that? Undying. Immortal. All right? Everlasting. So we're going to receive those everlasting bodies when we enter into that marriage chamber. Okay? And ultimately here, we're going to come down to the earth. Revelation 21 and 2. I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem. Okay? The elect. Jerusalem means teaching of peace. All right. The teachings of peace will be taught by the elect, starting with Yahweh Shai, the 12 disciples and the rest of the 144,000 
will be at the forefront of that. Then you have the large multitude coming down from the most high out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. Adorned in what? Those new bodies. Let's look up this word adorned. So we're going to be adorned in those new bodies. See? Cosmeo, to put in order, arrange, all right? ornament, adorn, metaphorically to embellish with honor and gain honor. So the elect, as we're going to show you who are going to receive that first dominion, okay, will be uh, ultimately entered, all right, into that, that second covenant. And that's those who are written in that book of life. Okay, now here, and if you say you're already in the marriage, okay, you've already went to the secret chamber, okay. <laughs> the secret chamber is the chariot. Now, this is Revelation 3 and 5, and to he that overcometh, the same shall be clothed in white raiment, those new bodies. Now you know what the white raiment represents, the new bodies, pure undefiled these bodies are defiled and i will not blot out his name out of the book of life but i will confess his name before the father and before the angels meaning you're going to be on that chariot you have a ticket all right and that ticket is given from the foundation of the earth all right now this word overcometh okay this word overcometh okay nikao like victory the, the, the greek word for nike is victory so nika uh, and the KO has to do with conquering, to carry off the victory, come off victorious of Hamashiach Yahweh victorious over all his foes, of the followers of Yahweh Christians that hold fast to their faith even unto death, all right, against the power of their foes and temptations and persecutions. Okay, this is why they are going to receive that first resurrection. Now, the question is if there's a first resurrection, what is the, is there another? Okay, well, we'll get into that. All right. Um, when one is arraigned or goes to law to win the case. Now, the elect pursuant to the book of um, let's get a first John overcome the wicked one. The elect set first John 2 and 14. I have written unto you fathers because I, ye have known him that is from the beginning. I have written unto you, young men, because you are strong, and the word of the Most High abideth in you, given the truth through the Holy Spirit, and ye have overcome the wicked one. So the elect have already overcome the wicked one, all right? But our, our faith still has to be tried. We still have to go through that straight gate, all right, to offer up this sacrifice. It's, it's written for us to go through these things, but who gets the victory is already written. You've already overcome the wicked one. A, a, a good precept to that is Ephesians 1. Okay, so you're already written in the book of life. It was it was chosen from the foundation of the earth. A lot of people look at the book of life as this book that's just going to be pulled out to say, well, you in it, come here. No, you in it. The book of life is ultimately those who are written from the foundation of the earth to be delivered, to get the victory under Yahweh Shai, man. Okay, Ephesians 1 and 3, blessed be God and the father of our Lord Yahweh Shai Hamashiach who have blessed us. Okay, with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places, according as he hath chose us in him, all right, before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. So anyone who's of this number is in the book of life, okay, in the foundation of the book, because what's written in the, the found, the, the, in the, um, in the volume of the book, not the foundation of the book, in the volume of the book, what's written is you know judgments you know who's going to be the you know the the, the uh, destruction of the two thirds you know that's written how our people who who rebel against this truth are going to be judged great miseries that's all written in the volume of the book but it's also written of those who are going to be delivered okay and none of the two thirds can partake of the book of life because they weren't chosen to. They're not going to be a part of that first dominion. They didn't stand stiffly for the name of Yahweh Bashim Yahushai. The only ones that are going to get a ticket to that feast, okay, are of the church, the bride, okay? And they will partake in that first dominion, okay? Having predestined us, predestinated us unto the adoption of children by Yahweh Shai, 
to himself according to the good pleasure of his will. You see what I'm saying? So again, the elect were chosen from the foundation of earth to receive the victory. So when you deal with the book of life, go here. Let's go back to these scriptures. I wish I should have did it on a computer so I can just go right back. Okay, um, Revelation 13 and 8. And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him, who? Esau, whose names are not written in the book of life of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. Okay, so the elect are tied to that blood, meaning they're tied to receive the victory, all right, of not being condemned. Their sins are covered, all right, and they've offered up the sacrifice to where they didn't worship the beast. They didn't bow, you see? This is why in Revelation 20, Revelation 20 and 4, and I saw thrones and they set up on them, all right, and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Yahweh Shai and for the word of the Most High, which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands. And they lived and reigned with Yahweh Shai a thousand years, the first 1,000 years in the kingdom of heaven, which are going to be vital to the earth itself, where the law, statutes, and commandments will be implemented into the earth under Yahweh Shai, all right, and the 144,000, all right, the large multitude as well will have their lot under that order. See? So they're going to reign with Yahweh Shai a thousand years, okay? Reign meaning to have influence, dominion. You see? Let's read that. That word reign. They didn't worship the beast in his image. Okay. To to basil you to be king, to exercise power, to reign, all right, of the governor of a province, of the rule of the Messiah, of the reign of the followers of Yahweh Shai in the millennium, metaphorically to exercise the highest influence to control. What did Yahweh Shai tell Peter? I give this key unto you, which is authority. It starts with the receiving of this word. But it's going to trickle down, okay, to the uh, the um, the kingdom and authority over the whole world. You see? So, let's see if I can copy this. Let's copy that so I can just do it like that. Now, Revelation 13 and 8, because I got to get another precept, right? <laughs> you see what I'm saying? It says... And they that dwelleth on the earth shall worship him. This is speaking of the the people who followed the beast, bowed to his, you know, his his they they worship the beast, whose names are not written in the book of life. So they, they don't have a mind, you know, to stray away from Esau's madness. They're overtaken by it. Let's get a, a precept in the book of Second Thessalonians, the second chapter, right? And the um Eighth verse, and then shall that wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and, and destroy with the brightness of his coming. Esau, the wicked, even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders and with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish because they receive not the love of the truth that they might be saved. See, they receive not the love of the truth. They bow to the beast. They, 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 they worshiped his image. They took his mark. See, the elect are going to do synonymous to that. And both of these lots are chosen from the foundation of the earth. So the two thirds, all right, won't be written in the book of life. Okay. And if you have someone who is, you know, offering up the, the works of righteousness, you know, doing the, the right thing, but then eventually they, you know, fall off like Judas Iscariot. Okay. They can be blotted out. You have to endure unto the end. Okay, so these these men of Israel, all right, didn't receive the love of the truth. All right, in verse 11, 2 Thessalonians 2 and 11, and for this cause, God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie, that they might be damned that believe not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. You see, but just as the elect were chosen from the foundation of the earth to be, um, Delivered these men 
All right, as the scriptures say, brute beast. Okay. Okay. Second Peter's two and twelve, an example of this. All right. Let's read, read verse uh, in the NLT. These false teachers are like unthinking animals. All right, creatures of instinct, born to be caught and destroyed, made to be what? What is it saying to King James? Made to be taken and destroyed. So they were created for these lots and for these purposes. Okay, so they they they're, they're not going to be written in the book of life. You see? Okay. Yep, yep. Verses of Revelation seventeen and uh, eight. You know, speaking of the same thing, how our people, all right, um, who worship this beast, his image and his mark, their names were not written in the book of the life from the foundation of the world. Okay. Revelation 20. Give me one second. All right. So let's get Revelation 20 and 12. All right. It says right here, this, this is the final judgment. And what is the final judgment synonymous with? The destruction of Babylon the Great. When you read Revelation, the 18th chapter, Babylon's fall is what leads to the kingdom of heaven. This is the final judgment. Okay, you read that chapter. We just kind of went into it in a lesson the other day. But, you know, verse 19, and after these things, Revelation 19 and 1, and after these things I heard, a great voice of much people in heaven saying, Hallelujah, salvation and glory and honor and power unto the Lord our power. True and right, righteous are his judgments, for he hath judged the great whore, which did corrupt the earth with her fornication. He hath avenged the blood of his servants at her hand. And I again said, Hallelujah and Hallelujah, and her smoke rose up forever. You see that? So ultimately... This is speaking of that final judgment, okay, when the elect are beamed up into that chariot, okay, um, Revelation 15, okay, and what happens? We're going to be beamed up, Revelation 15 and 2, and I saw, as it were, a sea, all right, of fire, all right, a sea of glass mingled with fire, okay, this is when we're beamed up onto the chair. We're going to be able to look down and see the destruction. And them that had gotten the victory over the beast, his image and his mark, and the number of his name stood on the uh, number of his name, stand on the sea of glass, having the harps of the Most High. And they sing the song of Moses, the servant of God, saying, what? Great and marvelous are their works. All right, Lord Almighty, just and true are thy ways, O king of saints. Okay, because he's going to what? At that time we're beamed up, there's going to be a great judgment. Okay, and those that have gotten victory over the beast, his image, and his mark. All right, they're going to be a part of that first dominion. All right, Revelation 20. Okay. And four. And I saw thrones and they that set up on them and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Yahweh Shai. And for the word of their, uh, the word of the Most High, which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark on their foreheads, and they lived and reigned with Yahweh Shai a thousand years. But the rest of the dead lived not again until the thousand years were finished. Okay? This is the first resurrection. Okay? The rest of the dead are the heathen nations. Alright? After Esau's destroyed, which there's other scriptures we can go into with Daniel to, to break that down, but let's just get to the point. This is the first resurrection. The first resurrection is Yahweh Shai and these men reigning on earth. All right, but more importantly, being beamed up first. All right, the first resurrection. It's the word first. Because again, if there's a first resurrection, is there another one? Okay, the other one is one, the rest of those spirits, those two third spirits are going to be, all right, after their destruction, they will be brought into everlasting life, the second covenant as well. They just won't be brought into a rulership position. They're going to be leased in the kingdom of heaven. All right. This is the first resurrection. The word first, 4413, four, Protos, 
first in time, placed in any succession of things, first in rank, influence, honor, chief, principal. So the elect men, all right, the elect are written in the book of life. All right, but at the forefront of it, of course, we're going to know it's going to be Yahweh Shai being 144,000, man. Blessed and holy, set apart is he that hath part in the first resurrection. See? On, on such the second death hath no power, but they shall be priest of the Most High, all right, and of Yahweh Shai, and shall reign with him a thousand years. And a lot of people think that this a thousand years is, you know, you know, um, speaking of a point where after that a thousand years, all right, the, uh, the, the devil will be able to reign again, the, the start a war. No, 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 no. It's just that the way this chapter is written is confusing, but you have to have the Holy Spirit dealing with you, all right, and uh, to understand that now, going back to where I was, I believe it's in this same chapter, but let's just get it real quick. Yep, Revelation 20 and 12, which this deals with what? The judgment at the throne of the Most High. Okay? It says, And I saw a great white throne, and him that sat on it, Yahweh Shai, that white throne is that chariot he's coming on. Okay? That's why we're going to be made white, because we're going to be beamed up, you know, clothed in white apparel, white raiment. All right? We're going to go into that pure, that chariot. All right. And he that I saw a great white throne and him that sat on it, from whose face the earth and heaven fled away and there was no place found for them. All right. Because they're not going to be beamed up. The heathen, no heathen's going to be beamed up. You got this weirdo. All right, who's on the Apostle Tahar's comment board talking about heathen are going to be priests after the order of Melchizedek, that heathen can be beamed up, saved. No, salvation, being beamed up, being priest, that's only for the Israelites. The heathen will be taught by the Israelites. Okay? And I saw the dead, all right, small and great, okay, stand before the Most High, and the books were open, all right, meaning the, the that book, is associated with judgment. So you're going to have a group of people judged. Two-thirds are going to be judged here in America. You're going to have judgments taking place throughout the earth. Okay? They're, they're ultimately going to receive their judgment. Okay? And the books were open. And another book was open, which is the book of life. So when that judgment takes place, the elect who are written in the book of life, all right, are going to be what beamed up judged and given their reward okay for standing stiffly for the name of the lord which is the book of life okay and the dead were judged out of those things that were written in the books according to their works okay so again like when yahweh shah returns let's get revelation 11 revelation the 11 chapter the elect ain't going to have uh, the two-thirds ain't going to have any part in that. So, Lockyer, it's a little late. It was Revelation 11. Okay. In 11, and after three days and a half, the spirit of life from the Most High entered into them. The elect. This is what's happening to us right now. Life has entered into us. All right? But we go from glory to glory till we get all the way to where we overcome death. That's the... That's, that's the Entering into that new covenant when death no longer has any dominion over us. That's the goal. Those new bodies, man. Okay? But the beginning process of that starts when we receive this word. After that 350 year period from 1619 to the 60s where we had no understanding of who we were. Judged. But from that point in the 60s, the Lord raised up, you know, chief men to teach this word and now look everywhere you look there's israelites and they stood up on their feet all right because life entered into them before that they were in a dead state dead body as it says earlier in the chapter and great fear fell on them which saw them and they heard a voice from the most high in heaven saying come up hither and they ascended up to heaven in a cloud 
the scriptures say in the very first chapter of Revelation, Yahweh Shai coming with cloud. The cloud, all right, is representative of that chariot, swift, all right? The scriptures say he maketh his chariot as a cloud. As a matter of fact, when you get Habakkuk, all right, it's a very symbolic book, man. This is why it's very imperative that men, the Lord, gave the Holy Spirit, break it down, man. Okay? And it's not boasting, but other people read these things and they, they wouldn't have no idea what the hell to say. They're like, we're going to be in the clouds floating around. But they can't go to that precept in Revelation 15 where we're going to be up there rejoicing, you know, that we got victory over the beast, his image is marked. They don't tie it to the Israelites being delivered out of their captivity. They can't do that. Habakkuk 3 and 8, okay, which this is what? A chapter foretelling God's deliverance of his people, the great destruction. Okay. Was the Lord displeased against the rivers? Was thy anger against the waters? Okay. Was thy wrath against the sea? Because it's going to be chaotic, man, when those chariots return. That's why we're going to have to get up out of here. That thou didst ride upon thy horses and thy chariots of salvation. The chariots of salvation, man. See? chariots of salvation there are chariots associated with salvation now this word chariot marakab chariot all right ma rakab chariot place to ride riding seat chariot seat okay rakab the root word to uh to mount and ride Mount, ride, rider. So so there are chariots of salvation. And who's on that chariot that's going to deliver us, man? There's another scripture. Let's see here. That's not it. Psalms 104 and 3. Who layeth the beam of his chamber in the water, who maketh the clouds his chariot, who walketh upon the wings of the wind. Okay? And when you get Revelation 1 and 7, behold, speaking of Yahweh Shai, he comes with clouds, and every eye shall see him, and they which pierced him also, and all the kindreds of the earth shall well because of him. This is Yahweh Shai. When he comes back, he's coming out of the clouds. Okay? He's coming out of the clouds, man. We just read that Matthew 24 and 30. And then shall appear a sign of the Son of Man in heaven. All right. Then shall all see of the, the tribes of the earth mourn. And they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven. All right. With power and great glory. In that very next uh, verse is what? He's going to gather together his elect. All right. And he, he shall send his angels with the great sound of a trumpet. And they shall gather together his elect from the four winds from one end of heaven to another. Because Israelites are scattered throughout the four corners of the earth. So only the Israelites are going to get on those chariots of salvation. Revelation 11 and 11. And after three days and a half, the spirit of life shall enter into them. Okay. They came unto life, all right, because they're written in the book of life, right? And what is this word life? Zoe, never knew that meant that life, all right, the state of one who was possessed of vitality or an animate, life, real, genuine life. All right, absolute fullness of life, which is essential, belongs to the Most High, but is given to men on earth in the form of the Holy Spirit. Okay, devoted, uh, life real and genuine, a life active and vigorous, devoted to the Most High, blessed in the portion even in this world of those who put their trust in Yahweh Shai. Okay. And they're going to receive those new bodies. The two-thirds ain't doing that. They're not a part of this great awakening. Okay? Now, some may come amongst us, 
And for one minute, they're down, but eventually they, they, they're blotted out. They fall out. But ultimately, overall, the two-thirds are just wicked, man. So after we wake up, and there's, it says um, Revelation 11 and 11, and after three days and a half, the spirit of life from the Most High entered into them, and he stood on their feet, and great fear fell on them which saw them. And they heard a great voice from heaven saying, Come up hither, and they ascended up into heaven in a cloud and their enemies beheld them okay why ain't the enemies in hell at that point point? and in the same hour there was a great earthquake and the tenth part of the city fell babylon the zip code goes from zero to nine ten fema regions the tenth part of the city fell and then the earthquake was slain all right of men seven thousand a complete number seven is completion and the remnant were affrighted and gave glory to the god of heaven that great earthquake, pursuant to the prophecy in the book of Jeremiah, the 50th chapter. Okay, I just felt like going through the scriptures. I saw that uh, question and I was just like, let me go into the scriptures. So this is what I'm doing. Jeremiah 50 and 46, at the noise of the taking of Babylon is the whole earth moved and the cry is heard among the nations. So that that's describing the very same thing that we're, uh, you know, reading here all right the second woe is passed and behold the third woe which is nuclear destruction world war three coming quickly and it's going to lead to a great earthquake and babylon being destroyed all right but at that time the elect are gonna what go up into a cloud all right after a voice says come up hither the elect of judah and ephraim they're going to be beamed up into the chariot come up hither is what the uh the, the prophecy says so they're written, written in the book of life. The second death has no power over them. The second death being the destruction of Babylon the Great, which is that great earthquake, okay, that we're reading about, okay? Revelation 20, okay? And 12, and I saw the dead, small and great, stand before the Most High, and the books were opened, all right. When when that judgment comes, all right. Ultimately, you're going to be judged according to what you were chosen to be from the foundation of the earth. That's when everything was written. That's when everything was for pre foreordained, man. Okay. And another book was open, which was the book of life. All right. And these dudes actually think y'all actually think the Lord is going to be one by one. Come here. You come here. Okay, uh, uh, you, this is your judgment. This is your judgment. It's already written. When Yahweh comes, that's the final judgment. Okay? And the fire is going to be on earth. And the, dead, and the dead were judged out of the things which were written in the books according to their works. Okay? And the sea gave up the dead which were in it, and death and hell delivered all right up the dead okay give me one second and death and hell delivered the, up the dead which were in them and were judged every man according to their works so you're going to have people being raised from the dead okay for judgments all kind of things are going to be taking place at the return of yahweh shai man okay all of them okay nobody is going to be able to get away this is why yahweh shai told those wicked scribes and pharisees how shall you escape the damnation, all right, of Gehenna fire? Okay, you can't escape. All right, so go ahead and do what you do because when that judgment comes, <laughs> you're going to partake in it. Okay, and death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is death and hell. Okay, when you read the book of uh, Habakkuk, all right, you read the Habakkuk, the second chapter. In 2 and 5, yea, also because he transgressed by hot, by wine, his philosophies, Esau, he is a proud man, neither keepeth at home, who enlarges his desire as hell and is as death, and cannot be satisfied, but gathereth unto him all nations, and heapeth unto him all people. All right, Revelation 20. And 14 and death and hell were cast into the lake of fire first corinthians 15 right
Let's see here. First Corinthians 15. What's that scripture? The last enemy that shall be destroyed is death. I think that's in this chapter, but I'll just look for it. The last enemy. Yeah. First Corinthians 15 and 26. The last enemy that shall be destroyed is death. Sin and the man of sin is ruling. So this this environment he's created on the earth is hell. Hell is a condition. All right. That's played out on earth. Okay. Basically that we're in hell, man. All right. <laughs> that's David uh, 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 described in the Psalms. The, the pains of hell have gotten hold on me, man. When Jonah was in the belly of the fish. All right. He was in hell. That's a, a messed up condition on earth. Or it can be the grave. Okay. Or it can be the, uh, the, the destruction. Okay, but the last enemy that shall be destroyed is death, for he hath put all things under his feet. But when he said all things are put under him, it is manifest that he ex expected what you did put all things under his feet. Yahweh Shah is going to have authority, man. Okay. First Corinthians 15 and 54. So when this corruptible shall put on incorruption and this mortal shall put on immortality. All right. When we're on that chariot and those new bodies pure, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written. Death is swallowed up in victory. Oh, death, where's thy sting? Oh, grave, where's thy victory? Right now, we're still subject to death in a sense that we can die, go back to the spirit world. We still go off at that point when we're on that chariot in that second covenant. All right, none of these things will have victory over us ever again. Okay, but thanks be it to the Most High, which giveth us the victory through our Lord, Yahweh Shah HaMashiach. Now going back to Revelation 20. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is death and hell. He is, a, this is, all of the works of death are played out here on earth. Okay, everything here leads to death, man. Okay. So death and hell were cast into the lake of fire, which the lake of fire is going to be the destruction of Babylon the Great. Okay? And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Meaning what? There's going to be great misery and pain and death that they're going to be associated with that the elect are going to be freed from. The blood of Yahweh Shai covers them from that penalty. You see what I'm saying? There's a scripture I'm thinking of. Let's see here. Mark 16 and 16. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. Baptized. All right. Meaning what? Your mind is washed away from the filth. Because you can physically dip yourself in water. All right. You can come out an even worse nigga. I've seen it. I'm one of them. I got dipped and baptized in water. All right. And there was a portion of my life where I was a complete nigga. You know, I wasn't as bad as a lot of niggas, yet still a nigga. Right? So the baptizing is the washing of water by the word. See? Where your mind is changed. The two-thirds are not, they're not written in the story to do that on this side. Okay? But he that believe it not shall be damned. Okay? <laughs> All right? Man, so many scriptures. 1 John 5 and 12, he that hath the Son hath life, and he that hath not the Son of the Most High hath not life. So you're not written in the book of life. So whosoever is not found written in the book of life, you're going to be cast into the lake of fire. When that judgment comes, that's written in the book of Peter, which will be on earth. It's not talking about underground here. 1 Peter 3 and 10. Or first Peter's uh second Peter's three, so like it. Second Peter's three and ten. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night. Okay, just like in uh Egypt, Yahweh Shai, that angel came at midnight, in which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise. Okay. There's gonna be fire, it's gonna be loud, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. The earth the earth 
Arataza, all right, also in the works therein shall be burned up. So the earth is what's going to be on fire. Okay, the earth is what's going to be on fire, man. Okay. <laughs> Second Peter 3 and 7, but the heavens and earth, which are now, all right, by the same word are kept in store, reserved unto fire, all right, because the first death was the flood. Second Peter 3 and 5, for this they are willing and ignorant of, that by the word of the Most High, the heavens of our old, all right, in the, the earth, standing out in water and in water, okay, it says, whereby the world that was then being overflowed with water perished. That was the first death. But the heavens and the earth, which are now by the same word, okay, in store reserved unto fire against the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. So, so that's what that's talking about. You see, and heavens could also mean the world. Okay. So the earth is what's going to be burned up. This is this fire that's coming that's associated with the second death is not going to come underground, man. Death and hell were cast into the lake of fire, man. That's this hellish condition that's on earth, man. Okay. Revelation 21 and 27 and there is shall in no wise enter anything that defileth, all right, neither whatsoever work of the abomination or make it alive, but they which are written in the Lamb's book of life, all right? You're not going to get in to that chariot, okay? You're not going to partake of that first dominion. You're not going to be at the forefront of leadership, setting things in order, Okay? You have to be pure. And what makes us pure is to be covered under the blood of Yahweh Shai. Revelation 22 and 19. If any man shall take away from the words of the book of this prophecy, which uh, ironically, you know, these dudes who fell out from Boston, they're telling you, well, we shouldn't have, we shouldn't talk about Esau. Okay, well, that's taken out the, the way from the books of this prophecy. They're telling you he then can be saved in the sense that they can receive eternal life. No, well, that's only for the Israelites. They have their blessing. So you all are taken out of words of the book of prophecy. Okay? Teaching hell. Right? Through. God shall take away his part of the book of life and out of the holy city, New Jerusalem, and from the things that are written in this book to be delivered, to be beamed up. Okay? That is what is meant by the book of life. Those who are chosen from the foundation of the earth to get the victory, man. It's not this book that's just going to be pulled out at the end. All right. And if you ain't written, you know, no, the Lord has already foreordained who's written in the book of life, man. Okay. So ultimately, y'all are edified on to the next. Shalom.